Today on Parents Corner, a conversation about some special newsletters that can help you help your child. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Parents Corner. I have two special guests with me today, and I'm so happy to have them. Um, we have Amanda Salvron and Jane Friend. And ladies, I thought we'd just start with you introducing yourselves, giving us a little information about you. So Amanda, can you go? Excellent. So I'm Amanda Salvron, the coordinator of elementary mathematics. Um, I am one of three mathematics coordinators here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And I am pleased to be here with you today and share some information about our newsletters. Um, I do have a 12-year-old daughter at home who is in seventh grade and uh, so I understand how important it is for us to have really good relationships between home and school so that we can be helpful um, for our students but also for our schools. Awesome, awesome. And Jane? And I'm Jane Friend, coordinator of elementary reading and integrated literacy. Like Amanda, I'm a third of that team. Um, so <laughs> myself and my team focus on elementary, uh, K through five. And while I'm not a parent, I am a proud aunt of a kindergartner, and you hey, can bet I am goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> constantly prying to figure out what's going on in school, um, getting tired of that answer, nothing. And so we're looking forward to sharing these newsletters as, as a way to open up the communication between what your, your children are learning in school and what questions you can ask at home uh, to support their learning and extend it as well. So, and that's why I brought you here, so thank you. Why I brought you here today, um, and I'm so excited about this show, because, um, so these newsletters are, are a little different from the newsletters that I remember back in the day, a little paper newsletter, and finding out what was going on at the school. Um, all the parties and whatnot. <laughs> so, so how, what, what was the decision, why was there a decision made to make these newsletters? Um, what, what was sort of the purpose behind that? And either one of you can go. Or both. <laughs> well, when I think about our system and our strategic plan um, in Anne Arundel County Public Schools, we often see the hashtag that we are better together. We recognize that um, here um, in, in central office, in our schools, we are all tasked with working together and reaching out to the community mm -hmm. so that we are all better prepared to teach our students, build relationships with our families, because we recognize that our families are part of our team. Right, so we are all bi one big family, mm -hmm. uh, including the parents, and, and we really need them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Shelly, you mentioned newsletters that perhaps you used to receive um, yeah. when your <laughs> children were in elementary We're school. <laughs> and so they might, parents can expect to still see, receive school-based newsletters with information about things like class parties, events that are going on in, in the specific school that your child is enrolled. Um, these newsletters focus more systemic, uh, things that our system has in common. So we have about 80 elementary schools across Anne Arundel County. And one thing that we have in common is the curriculum or what our children are learning in the schools across the system. And so these no newsletters focus on the different themes, the concepts, um, perhaps the standards that the different themes focus on for so our parents students. might not know this, yep. um, and I know it just from when I worked in a school, but uh, so the kids at Rolling Knolls are learning the same thing as the kids at Bodkin at the same time. They're all working on the same themes at the same time. Exactly. So that's why these newsletters could really come together and be useful. That's correct. Right, right. Wow. So, thinking of the newsletters, I, I think we'd like to, to, I think the best way is to really be able to see them. So, um, um, Amanda, you have a, a lovely laptop with you today. If you could um, just give us a, a look. At, and and uh, I guess the first thing is, where do we find them? How do we know how to get to them? Okay. All of our parents should start here at the aacps.org.org website for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And up in this top toolbar, they can go ahead in and select their school. I'm going to head over to elementary and just choose Annapolis as our first one. All right. If I scroll down just a little bit, you'll see that under the picture of the school, I actually need to go into the specific school website. And all the schools have those, right? Yes, they do. Great. And once I get into that school website, you'll see that I'm now in Annapolis Elementary. And for every school over here on the left, you will see a button for newsletters. Once you open the newsletters, today we're specifically going to talk about what you see over here on the right-hand side, which is curriculum and instruction. 
In the center here, you'll see the school newsletters, which will be different for every school. But these newsletters that we're going to talk about today are a little bit different. You can see that they are available for pre-kindergarten through grade five. They're available in both English and Spanish for our families. I'm going to go ahead and click English grade four. Awesome. And you will see what pops up is a picture of one of our great students. And it tells you that you are in theme three for grade four. So that's just a quick check of where we are. Now I'm going to stop you for one second. You said theme three of grade four. What, what, do you, what does theme three mean? There's, there's different themes throughout the year? Or? So we do. We have four themes in, in our grade levels. And um, they don't always line up specifically with the quarters. Um, but we do follow it sequentially one through four throughout the school year. OK. I just want to make sure our parents understand. And so I scroll down. It gives us some basic information about what your fourth grader is learning at this time of the year. The focus is inquiry, and we're moving into critical thinking theme. Our students are going to be focused on inquiry as a natural, as a natural extension of curiosity. You'll see social studies, some information about them. And then we come down to mathematics. I'm going to talk specifically here about mathematics for just a moment. And you'll see that there are links for each of the units. Again, within theme three, our fourth graders participate in four units, 9, 10, 11, and 12. These are actually each a link. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Oh. And you will see it takes you right to the parent newsletter. All right, so because you are a math person, you're going to really explain what the math newsletter looks like for us. That's awesome. Absolutely. You will see that this is specifically geared for our parents. Okay. They are written by members of the elementary math curriculum team, and that includes some of our classroom teachers, but also our central office staff. We want to be able to give parents um, some access to what students are doing in the classroom each and every day during this unit. You'll see there's a quick note to parents. Over here on the right-hand side, you'll see just some important tips and concepts of how you can support your child be successful in mathematics. On the bottom left of each newsletter, you will see that there's vocabulary. This is the vocabulary that students are going to be studying during this specific unit of mathematics. Okay. This front page is the same for every unit, for every grade level, one through five, throughout the entire school year. So really quick, by front page, you mean the structure of the page? The yes. content is different, but the structure is yes. the same. Yes, thank you okay. for that clarification. Makes it easy to understand then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as I scroll down, you will see that we move into some specific strategies to support your student learning. Again, we are still looking at teaching mathematics in a different way than some of us learned. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to give parents some ideas of what their students not only are hearing in the vocabulary, but what are the examples and strategies that they're taking part in during the school day. So there are some specific strategies to support. Again, this is fourth graders at this time. And then we also like to provide some games. These games were specifically chosen to align to the content that's taught during this unit, but they were also chosen so that they are low prep and that they need very few materials. So we hope that parents will engage with their students in these different games at home to support their learning. Now, Amanda, so are these games that the kids are playing in the classroom as well? Or is this um, just something that, that you've come up with that you think would really help parents help their kids at home? So it's probably a mixture of both. Okay. Uh, these games are all chosen from the curriculum documents, mm -hmm. but our teachers do have choices of which of the games they choose during instruction. So they may have seen this, they may have seen something similar, but these were the ones that we thought would best work at home. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. Okay. okay, so as I scroll down again, the final page, again, in the structure of our newsletters, you will see there are real-world connections. We're always trying to have our students um, and our families and teachers make real-world connections to mathematics. Where mm -hmm. do we see math living in our worlds? So that's another way. So the parents could play the games with the kids, mm -hmm. but then also when they're you know stuck in traffic somewhere, they could just talk about some of these um, Oh, did you ever think of this or, or create some of their own real world connections? Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. Just a, a couple, um, a couple ways to plant the seed for parents to be having that conversation. If I may, I'm going to go back and just choose 
the Spanish version just to show you the one main difference between our English and our Spanish version. Okay. Again, you see we have all of our headings okay, and all of the basic components are translated into Spanish. When we get down to mathematics, you will also see that each of our unit fee, our unit newsletters are translated into Spanish as well. But there's one thing that I think is very important. This first page, as we saw before, the structure is the same. Mm -hmm. The note to the parents, the strategies here of how you can help your students at home, as well as the vocabulary is all translated into Spanish. Very intentionally, and work with um, our ESOL, our ELA, and lots of other partnerships, we made decisions that we're going to ensure that instructions are in Spanish for both our Spanish-speaking students and our Spanish-speaking parents, but we purposely put the information around the strategies that students will see. We put that in English because we want the connection to be made with the students between what they're seeing in the classroom and then what they're seeing at home. Okay, okay. So again, the directions are in Spanish, but the basic information remains in English because we wanted the students to be able to connect their work in the schoolhouse to the work that we're asking them to do at home. Okay, and so through those conversations, you knew that was the best way to make sure that happened. Yes. With other groups. All right, so I, I thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I also, well, we, we don't want to just stick with our mathematics. We also um, want to find out a little bit more about language arts. So Jane, can you, can you tell me what, what does that look like? What do one of the newsletters for, for language arts look like? Absolutely. So as Amanda shared, um, just below mathematics, you'll see one of the great things about these newsletters is they are cross-curricular. So just below mathematics is science, which gives parents information about what students are working through during that theme. If we keep going down, You'll get to elementary reading and integrated literacy, integrated speaking to all of the different types of literacy students will see. So digital media is a really big piece of this as well. This section is broken into two different parts. The first is reading, and the reading is theme-based. So as you'll see, um, the texts that are selected also fit into that critical thinking theme or whatever theme it is that the students are focused on throughout that uh, portion of the curriculum. One thing that all literacy has in common across uh, the grade levels as well as the schools in our system is interactive read aloud. So that's a, par a portion of the day where teachers wow. read, <laughs> read to the students. Um, I would argue it's probably the quietest part of the day because <laughs> students are so tuned in to what the teacher is, is reading. Um, they're reading with fluency and expression and um, there's a, a lot of sort of plot junkies uh, we're building up to that, that in, with students. Um, so this first paragraph will talk about the types of text that we've selected to fit into that theme in the interactive read aloud portion. Again, that's the part where the teachers are reading to the students. So is it giving specifics or it's just the, the types that a teacher might be picking up at that point? More often than not, it's the types of text. So whether it's primarily focused on literary or information, if it's a combination of both, and sort of the things that those texts have in common. Okay. okay. Um, but in some cases, as you'll see as we scroll down here, you'll see that some of the authors are highlighted. And mm -hmm. this is an excellent opportunity where it says home connection there. Um, in this particular theme, we'll see authors such as Jacqueline Woodson and Eve Bunting. Mm -hmm. These are popular authors. Um, this is a great opportunity for, for parents to take their students to the public libraries, right. ask them for more books on the authors, which um, is often a great hook to get students to continue reading. Um, if you scroll down a bit more, you'll see questions to ask your students. So I think we've all had the response to, what did you do today? Nothing. Right, <laughs> right. this is better table, <laughs> table uh, dinner conversation. Exactly. So um, some open-ended questions that will get the kids talking. Uh, what books are you reading at school? So then they're able to answer with some titles or some authors. Um, again, that common, we know that in every school, in every grade le le level, 
teachers are reading to the students. So what is your teacher reading to you now? Um, and what do you think about that? What do you like? So these are, these are great questions that will elicit some further conversation than the standard nothing from our students. And, and just to, um, to backtrack just a second, so the word text is any book. I just want to make sure our, our families all know that. So that's any, I shouldn't even say any book, that is anything that the kids are reading. Great question, yes. So text is all inclusive. Um, it might be even in, in our primary grades now, we have what we call a shared reading or a big book. So literally it's an oversized book um, that all the students can see and read together. They read that, it, it builds um, a com class community, and so that text would be included in that. Same with digital text. Anything that students are reading in the bigger sense of that would be considered a text. And it could even be a wordless picture book would still be a text. Absolutely. So I just want to make sure parents know that. Because yes. Because I think the kids know that because they're used to that language, but the parents might not. Yes. So. Great clarification. So the second piece of the literacy portion is the writing. and. The way that we are approaching writing in our elementary schools is we're focusing on one genre of writing for an entire theme. Um, so this might be different than the way we learn to write. I remember when I was in elementary school, we switched almost on a weekly basis um, mm -hmm. from a narrative to an informational to letter writing to poetry. And now you'll see those within an entire theme where students have really time to learn the craft. They study authors. A little um, more mastery then. Absolutely. They take their writing through the editing and revision process over Love and it. over again. Yeah. So they're really proud. They get to try on different ideas. Um, so they're initial idea of what they might write about is not necessarily what they end up publishing. So it's the, it's really word. focused on the, <laughs> on the craft of writing and um, by the end of it students have poured so much energy into it that they're so proud to share it. So this initial paragraph here shares exactly what type of writing the students will focus on during the theme and again that stretches over weeks. Um, so parents know that that's that's exactly what, it's not flipping from week to week. They can study that craft over So then time. that would help, if they were to read this, then that would help the parent to know what kinds of, again, they could use this as dinner conversation, but what are you writing now? What does that look like? They could talk about how they were writing in school and how it might have been different, and I like that. Absolutely, and, and you can see right below, the second paragraph um, gives some ideas for a home connection. So in this case, they're studying historical texts, when you visit the public library with your child, you could gear them towards that historical text section of the library and study together what kinds of things that they're seeing. Um, another popular one is persuasive writing. And so um, kids really like that unit because of course they they, their, vo their voice is heard um, through the power of writing. And so parents can really strike that conversation if they happen to be in that theme about uh, what is it that you're trying to advocate for or against in right. some cases. Okay. And then if you continue to scroll down the newsletter, you'll see some additional information um, for advocating building relationships, some helpful links. So just a little bit of everything then that Abs could be useful to a parent. Exactly. And some important information, so some s systemic dates. Um, Amanda did mention the school-based newsletters that are available. These dates are district-wide dates to keep in mind, such as early dismissals, report cards, things that stay consistent throughout our entire system. Wow. Well, thank you so much for showing us that. That's really useful, and it's nice to be able to see it. So I know what you already talked to, one of you already talked to how there were so many different people that were involved in the process of creating these. Um, but I thought it'd be sort of fun to ask you, if, if, was there any piece of it when you were helping that particularly resonated with you, got you really excited that you were like, oh, this is awesome. I want to make sure that the parents can, can experience this or the kids, you know, that this would work. Um, Jane, did you? Well, I think um, one of the most exciting pieces for me is the opportunity for the learning to continue outside of the school day. So we know that true, authentic learning requires application. And mm -hmm. while we can present students with opportunities to do that throughout the school day, 
learning doesn't just happen from bell to bell. Um, so when students can apply the things that they've learned, for example, they're learning about electricity in school, if they can apply that to the real world around them outside of the bell before and after school, and sometimes that requires some prompting from adults in their lives. And so when parents know exactly what it is that they can extend and ask, then those opportunities to learn um, can extend beyond the school day, which is really, really exciting. You just made students. me think of something, too. I remember when my daughter started kindergarten, um, I said, oh, I get to learn all of these new things. I mean, there was a lot that I learned in the last 12, 13 years now that's yeah. going on because I got to learn with her. So I, I imagine that a lot of parents would have fun with that and would be able to really expand their own. I mean, we're all lifelong learners. Absolutely. So, but that'll encourage the kids as well. And I think there's multiple opportunities. The newsletters lend themselves to lots of opportunities for that. So whether it's visiting the library and picking out a new book with an author that maybe your child's familiar with, but you aren't, that they can introduce you to, or um, a social studies unit that sparks an interest in visiting a museum together. So I think the opportunities are far beyond um, just saying, what did you do today in school? Um, right, so we, we could make these some family trips. You right. never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Amanda, was there anything that particularly resonated with you or that you thought, oh, I'm just so glad we put this in there this way? Or So I think it goes back to where I showed the front page of each of our new newsletters that stays you know, very si similar in each grade level. And we specifically reach out to the parents and even this little Dear Parents box that is mm. the first thing to and show up. And I love up. that structure. It's so awesome. just reaching out to them because we certainly recognize that, again, our students may be learning strategies and skills that were different than how we <laughs> experienced them <laughs> as students. And we want to be there to support our students. We want them to know that there are multiple ways to solve math problems. Mom's not right and the teacher's wrong or dad's not right and mom's wrong. There really is a lot of different ways that we can solve mathematics problems. And similar to what Jane shared, that learning extends outside of the schoolhouse. Each and every day, we have math moments that present themselves to us. So we encourage our parents to make the most of each of them. Because we're then asking our students to take these strategies, these concepts, and these skills that they're building on in the classroom and apply them to novel situations. Right. With our youngest learners, we can start by um, counting items in the grocery store. We may talk about some ideas. Again, the grocery store is a great place. We can talk about money. We can talk about um, weight. There's so many of those opportunities that present themselves. We want to take advantage of them. We also share how parents can help their children be successful. And so sometimes those are very specific to mathematics, but we also just talk about being positive about math. Mm, that's okay. huge. That's Letting huge. our students or our friends or everyone know that math may have been a struggle, but we all can do math. Right. So being positive about that, making it part of the everyday life and the real world experiences, which we then connect to the last page of each one of our newsletters, we try to create that real world connection to where do we see math so that parents can make those math moments. So, I, and I think that that really is awesome because by building the parents understanding, then you can have them as a, as a champion along with you. That's right really important. That's right. That partnership and that relationship is extremely important. Right, right. Well, thank you. Um, so another question I had and I, I think is what what if I have questions about um, something in the curriculum or, or um, I think I shared with you how back when my one daughter was in fourth grade and she said, oh, we're not doing division the same way. So the teacher said, you know, yours would be different. And um, she thought that was so funny. But um, as a parent, what, what if I had questions? Okay, well, what, why are they doing it this way? Or how, do, how does that all work? And what, is, what does this look like? What, um, what would you say the, the, the parent should do at that point? So I think it's a great opportunity that now we have these newsletters for every theme that can be found right here on our website as we shared, that that would be the first place to go. That's going to um, give you that additional piece of information and maybe a little bit more specifics than you may have had in the past. So this is going to inform you just the, the actual document. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So that will be the first place again uh, to go and look for that. I would also always reach out to the teacher. 
our teachers wow. have different <laughs> strategies and ideas and also different vocabulary that they use teaching throughout the day that sometimes is helpful for our parents to hear from the teacher okay. so that we can have that common language between home and school. And the teacher, I would think, might also have um, for your specific child might be able to say, oh, you know what, this activity would probably really work well, or you might want to work on this one more, knowing that student. I'm, I'm thinking of reading specifically. <laughs> Absolutely. So they, because they know how the student is doing in the classroom, and they could say this is what you might want to focus on, and here's some really great activities mm -hmm. that are in there. And even when it comes to interest, nobody knows that about the children better than your child's teacher. Um, yeah. So I mentioned some authors that we have in the curriculum, but we know that some students connect to some authors or genres of books, mm -hmm. uh, the types of books, better than others. So when you're looking for specific recommendations or ways to support your child, your teacher's definitely the go-to because um, you know, one child might adore graphic novels, which we completely support, and another might be an avid fiction reader. And so, or nonfiction reader. But let them go with it and enjoy it. I, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so we only have about a minute left um, today, but I wanted to ask you, just to be sure, what if the parents get really excited about this, but what if their child just seems really frustrated? So they're asking them questions at the dinner table and the kid just really seems frustrated. What, what do you suggest that they do with that? Should they just forge ahead or? <laughs> so I would say, again, going back to this new this newsletter that we now have to offer, we have a little bit more information with those questions or ideas around theme concepts. I would always encourage parents to leave it open-ended and turn that around and say, well, what can you tell me? I love it. Don't put I them on the it. spot, but what can you tell me about um, what you did here in math or about that, um, that interactive read aloud that you've been working on in class? Awesome. And maximizing that interest, too. What, what did you like about today? What are you excited about from today? Awesome. Wow. There's so much we could talk about. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate it. I hope that the parents can use this. Um, I have a feeling that they, they're, it's going to get a lot of good use. And thank you for showing us how to get there. And a thank you for joining us for another edition of Parents' Corner. Until next time.